Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to our service of morning prayer on the second Sunday before Lent. My name is Alec, I'm the Rector of East Barnet and St Mary's East Barnet is closed for public worship at the moment in order to help keep our local community safe. Many other services are available on this YouTube channel. And there are also more social opportunities and meetings available online. The church is still active in worship and prayer and study. For details of everything that's going on within our community, please look at our website, follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook, or email administrator at stmarysestbarnet.org for weekly news from St Mary's. The Church of St Mary's costs about £2,000 a week for us to run. That's a cost sunk into our historic building, but also thrown open into the community through our services and care. In addition, we're just about to begin an ambitious new building project, the creation of a new church hall on our main church site, which will temporarily increase our costs. Thank you to all of you who support St Mary's through your donations and your generosity. If you would like to make a donation electronically, then you can do so by going to stmarysestbarnet.org forward slash giving. To join in with our service today, you'll be able to find a complete order of service on our webpage, or words that you can join in with will appear on the screen. Jesus says, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me shall not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Let us confess to Almighty God our failure to live in the light of his love and to shine it out of our lives and into the lives of others. Father, we have sinned against heaven and against you. We are not worthy to be called your children. We turn to you again. Have mercy on us. Bring us back to yourself as those who once were dead, but now have life through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the God who loved the world so much that he sent his Son to be our Saviour, forgive us our sins and make us holy to serve him in the world through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs>
our seasonal canticle is a song of God's light. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom then shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom then shall I be afraid? Though a host encamp against me, my heart shall not be afraid. And though there rise up war against me, yet will I put my trust in him. One thing have I asked of the Lord, and that alone I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the fair beauty of the Lord, and to seek his will in his temple. For in the day of trouble he shall hide me in his shelter, in the secret place of his dwelling shall he hide me, and set me high upon a rock. Therefore will I offer in his dwelling an oblation with great gladness. I will sing and make music to the Lord. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. Our eyes have seen your salvation, a light to enlighten the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. John chapter 1 verses 1 to 14. In the beginning the word already existed. The word was with God and the word was God. From the very beginning the word was with God. Through him God made all things. Not one thing in all creation was made without him. The word was the source of life. And this life brought light to humanity. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has never put it out. God sent his messenger, a man named John, who came to tell people about the light so that all should hear the message and believe. He himself was not the light. He came to tell about the light. This was the real light, the light that comes into the world and shines on everyone. The word was in the world, and though God had made the world through him, yet the world did not recognise him. He came to his own country, but his own people did not receive him. Some, however, did receive him and believed in him. So he gave them the right to become God's children. They did not become God's children by natural means, that is, by being born as the children of a human father. God himself was their father. The Word became a human being, and full of grace and truth lived among us. We saw his glory, the glory which he received as the Father's only Son. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. The Gospel Canticle is the Benedictus. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant, David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors, and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, should be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. There are words 
that have been invented for the sake of dictionary compilers and lovers of Scrabble. There are words which are intended only to confuse us. And there are forms of communication which, despite a more positive intention, only achieve the opposite of actually communicating. There are even sermons a bit like that. There are words like anti-disestablishmentarianism, or heptachycholangiogastromy, or pneumonultramicroscopic silicol volcanoconiosis, which are all these things, especially when they appear in a sermon. John's Gospel uses the word in its opening verses to mean something far beyond these language games. Here it means the creative reason that called all creation into being and the person who is God from God. But there is a great depth of insight in the way that John's Gospel expresses this understanding of Jesus's identity by naming it as the Word. For it helps us to understand also the belief that God's self is fundamentally communicative. Because language is the most human expression of the desire to build up personal and social relationships. So John's way of writing of the Word highlights the belief that within the life of the Holy Trinity itself, there is intercommunication and a relationship based on a complete unity of understanding. To write or to speak of the Word begotten and the Spirit sent by the Father are the ways that Christians understand the revelation that God is not a single, solitary, silent one. But God is a Trinity who is sharing and communicating a rich and interactive internal life. Sharing and communicating also with and in the creation, which John's Gospel understands came into being through the Word. With, the Hebrew Bible also imagines, acts of speech, which did not just command creation to become itself, but which called its components and citizens into being and into development. From let there be light to let us create humankind in our image, Genesis writes of acts of divine communication as if they are underpinning creation. And the Psalms write of the freedom of the world to respond in a huge diversity of voices to echo an anthem of praise back to the Word. Our words, and those of voiceless creation, are written of as if they are a gift of God, responding from the earth to the almighty Word, which chaos and darkness heard, and took their flight. John's Gospel also holds the Word as a symbol of full, and clear expression of the opposite of language games and the kind of rhetoric that deforms truth for political or persuasive advantage. That's the kind of approach to words which Augustine of Hippo described as elevating one's reputation in proportion to one's success in deceiving people. Because John's Gospel comes from a mature meditation of the knowledge of all the things that Jesus did, which if every one of them were written down, I suppose that the world itself could not contain the books that would be written. It names Jesus as the Word, meaning the communication, truly and plainly, of all that the invisible God is. The Word is the communicator of the full brightness of divine glory, the glory as of a Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. This is a way of writing of the Incarnation, of the Word becoming flesh, that sees it as a true, clear expression of God's self, a communication to us of what lies in the heart of the Holy Trinity, undistorted by form or composition, but proceeding to be heard or read 
as it was still in the beginning. Reflecting on the depth of meaning that can be associated with the word as a communicative, creative and clear understanding of God's own nature causes me to also think about the nature of our communication with one another, particularly at the moment. In one sense, the pandemic has strained or severed the quality of human social interactions by limiting our closeness, by stopping our ability to meet. It has changed and challenged the internal relationships of our community. And it has increased many people's emotional strain. And particularly, that has been the case during this current third lockdown. Charity, as much as clarity in communication, becomes so important when we seek to speak with each other Yet we cannot see the non-verbal clues that enrich each other's spoken communication normally, let alone enter into the complexity of each other's context and experience of this disease. In another sense, the pandemic has thrown into sharp relief the importance of building links by communication within our own community. It is a joy to hear how many members of the congregation at St Mary's are on the phone to each other, or to see the increasing numbers logging onto Zoom every Sunday at 11 to catch up with each other, or to hear when people are responding to services and learning events they have valued, or especially to the Christingle service on the church's social media accounts. It is a joy to realise that the Christian quality of our communication is still able to build up sustaining relationships just when they are most challenged by the boundaries and separations to communication made necessary by the dangers of severe acute respiratory syndrome coronavirus too. Let us affirm our faith in the one for whom we exist. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. To the beginning. Come Holy Spirit upon us. Please respond, renew us and direct us. Come Spirit of God, fill our lives, fill our minds that we may know you, fill our hearts that we may love you, and move our wills that we might serve you. Let our whole being proclaim you. We pray for the newly baptised, for all who are being prepared for confirmation, and those preparing for ordination. For your whole church may follow forth gifts of the Spirit. Come Holy Spirit upon us, renew us and direct us. We give thanks for the wonders and mysteries of the world. We pray for the artists, musicians and talented people. We pray for all who work in conservation, that they may work with vision and in gentleness for all who are seeking to show a love towards the earth. Come Holy Spirit upon us, renew us and direct us. Lord, be known among the leaders of our community. Guide with your goodness all making decisions about our future. We pray for planning officers, councillors and politicians 
Give them wisdom and a sense of service. We pray for our own homes and our neighbourhood. Come Holy Spirit upon us, renew us and direct us. We pray for all who walk in darkness, the doubting and the despairing. Lord, we think of those who have suffered through accidents, those who have endured cruelty, all who have suffered neglect. We remember any who are captive to bad memories. We pray today for the terminally ill, for all in hospital or ill at home. We remember particularly Trevor and Luke, Janet and Angela, Gilly, Don and family, Jean, Pauline, Raymond, Chris P, Janet, Barry, Debbie, Kathy, Joyce, Emma, Sue, Ian and family, and Dorothy. Come, Holy Spirit, upon us, renewers and directors. We give thanks for all who have shared their wisdom, all who have left us good examples to follow. We remember Jean Bull, Mark Langham, Pat and Cyril Corio. We pray that they, with all the saints and our loved ones departed, may rejoice in the brightness and glory of your kingdom. Come, Holy Spirit, upon us, renewers and directors. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our anthem this week, which comes from a recording by the St Martin's Voices, is Christ as a Light by Margaret Rizza. the second Sunday before Lent. Almighty God, you have created the heavens and the earth and made us in your own image. 
teach us to discern your hand in all your works and your likeness in all your children. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit reigns supreme over all things, now and for ever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. If you'd like to be put in touch with a group of people to support you in prayer and conversation, then please do contact me. And if you've been watching this service on Sundays from 10am when it's available, then you've still got time to tune in on Zoom to our Sunday morning opportunity to catch up over coffee. For an invitation to Zoom, please email administrator at stmarieseastbarnet.org. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us all for evermore. Amen. Thank mm-hmm. you.